The purpose of this film is to acquaint you with the component parts and the operation of the N1 compass. The N1 is a remote indicating magnetic slave directional gyro compass system with a latitude compensator. It is similar to the magnetic slave compass system and consists of the C2 transmitter normally located in the left wing tip. The amplifier for the transmitter is located in the fuselage. The directional gyro and the slaving control unit are also located in the fuselage. The repeater indicators are located in remote crew positions in the aircraft. and the master indicator is located at the navigator's position. The N1 compass can be used as a gyromagnetic slave compass or a directional gyro with corrections made for apparent precession. These units are similar to those used in the J2 compass, with the exception of the master indicator. All controls for the operation of this system are located on the face of the master indicator. The first of these is the latitude correction control knob. The function of this knob is to switch back and forth from magnetic slave operation to directional gyro operation and also set in latitude. Turning the knob fully counterclockwise slaves the instrument. To use the instrument as a directional gyro, the latitude of the aircraft's position should be known. As an illustration, use 30 degrees north latitude. This unslaves the instrument, and it is now being used in directional gyro operation. To set the aircraft's latitude, Turn the latitude correction control knob until the latitude pointer is set on 30 degrees north. The latitude scale is divided into two degree increments clockwise from 90 degrees north to 90 degrees south. In this illustration, the aircraft changes latitude in flight. The latitude pointer should be reset progressively to the new latitude. Generally, the setting of the mid-latitude approximately every two degrees is sufficient. The second important control is the synchronizer knob. When the compass is in directional gyro operation, set the heading pointer to the desired gyro heading reference. When it is in slaved operation, that is, when the latitude correction pointer is in the off position, use the knob to synchronize the heading pointer to correct magnetic heading. In this case, the enunciator acts as visual reference to show which direction to rotate the heading pointer to synchronize the system. The heading obtained should be checked against the B-16 compass to avoid 180 degree ambiguity. When enunciator pointer is centered, the system is synchronized. The B-16 compass is being used as a reference. When using the system as a directional gyro, the enunciator scale is not used. The synchronizer knob is used only to set the heading pointer. To illustrate, the B-16 simple magnetic compass on the right reads 090 degrees. 
The synchronizer knob is now turned arbitrarily to set the heading pointer on 100 degrees. The gyro is now aligned. As visual proof that the system is coordinating signals from either the C2 transmitter or the latitude correction mechanism, there is a correction servo indicator. Observe the direction and speed of rotation of the white dot. The dot rotates clockwise when the latitude correction pointer is set in northern latitude. Counterclockwise when the latitude correction pointer is set in southern latitude. In terms of 23 degrees or more per minute, this slaving control inactivates the leveling of the gyro to minimize compass error. The N1 compass system must have a thorough pre-flight check before the aircraft takes off. The first thing to do is to check the cable connections of all units. This will ensure good contact. Check with the pilot for necessary power and allow approximately 15 minutes for warm-up time. Check slaving control and directional gyro by listening to establish that motor and gyro are running. After the system is warmed up, the navigator continues his pre-flight check. He sets the latitude pointer to the off position, then synchronizes the system. Check the enunciator by rotating the synchronizer knob clockwise and then counterclockwise. Annunciator pointer should follow and show direction of correction needed. Next, check correction servo indicator for direction and speed of rotation. Rotate gyro and rubber shock mounts, both clockwise and counterclockwise. Check heading pointer to see that it follows the movement of the gyro. Then check the repeater indicators. The system is now ready for in-flight use. Once airborne, ask the pilot for power and allow the system to warm up. For in-flight use of the magnetic slave compass, set the latitude scale pointer to the off position. Then synchronize the system. When in areas where it is desirable to use the directional gyro, set the aircraft's latitude on the latitude correction scale. Then set the heading pointer to desired gyro reference heading of 120 degrees. Make periodic checks of the correction servo indicator. The N1 compass system is especially useful in polar regions. Proper care and adjustment of this system will assure safe arrival at your destination.